Hey, happy Thanksgiving and welcome to another edition of the Friday Show. This is a special edition, Joe. I'm here with Joe Neville, our Bloodstock editor. This is the this is the one we always wait for all year. It's the uh, Turkey Awards. And uh, 98th last year, this is the 120th, I think, then this year, something like that. A tradition unlike any other. That's right. That is right. Hey, as always, we're brought to you by Woodbine. There's a couple of really good two-year-old stakes this weekend. The Gray Stakes and the Mazarin, they're grade three races on the all-weather surface. I know they've had some weather problems last weekend. Let's hope this weekend that's uh, clear and sunny and in the 70s up there in Toronto. Probably not a very good chance of that, but we'll see. You never know. Uh, yeah, you never know. Um, the Turkey Awards, we try to have some fun. You know, we try not to take ourselves too seriously, but uh, you got to let loose once in a while. So, Joe, what uh, what do we have as the theme? This year's Turkey Awards, they kind of always use the same awards. What, let's start us off here. Well... Thanksgiving is a season of everyone gathering around the table and enjoying some food, whether you're eating turkey, whether you're eating mashed potatoes, whether you're having a completely different meal from the traditional Thanksgiving meal. But the one thing that's important when you're around that table is etiquette. So we're going to kick this thing off with the No Elbows on the Table Award. Oh, okay. Now, it's especially rude to use your elbows at Thanksgiving dinner, but it's still rude to use them at any other point in the year. The stretch of the Lucas Classic at Churchill Downs definitely counts in that category. Uh, jockey Sonny Leone had the lead in the stretch aboard Rich Strike, and then he lost it to Hot Rod Charlie, but it wasn't clear sailing for the winner. The official line from the jockey was that his saddle slipped, but the stewards didn't buy that and handed him a 15-day sus suspension. Now, before we go on, that category was suggested to us by Pollock Report insider Albert Milano on the, our Patreon right. feed. Thank you very much, Albert. We appreciate you. You know, what a year it's been for Sonny Leon. I, winning the Derby with with, with Rich Strike, the, the huge long shot, and now bookending it, winning the Turkey Award from the Pollock Report. I don't know which one probably means more to him. Um, I would guess probably the Derby by a little bit. But, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, that was that was what they used to call race riding. Mm -hmm. um, Robin's racing, but now it's uh, it's a kind of a no no. You cannot you cannot use your elbows. Uh, try to push somebody off a horse. Although we did see that uh, last year with Aran Ortiz, I believe. Uh, I believe we did, and that's just it's a particularly tough spot to do it because for a big race at a track like Churchill Downs, you've got high definition cameras looking down the stretch at you. You got a horse as famous as Rich Strike, so all the photographers were out. Like, they got that shot. This isn't, you know, you weren't, you wouldn't be able to hide something like that like you might be able to at Belterra Park or something, you know, a track of that level where the, you know, simulcast quality might not be as good, the amount of many photographers out. You know, you can't, you can't get away with stuff like that at a level like that. Let, let me just go back for one second and correct myself to avoid litigation oh here. Aran Ortiz didn't push anybody off of a horse. He just knocked somebody off of a horse. Very he careful. Did. Tread yeah. lightly, Ray. Tread very, very lightly. <laughs> yeah, my, my lawyers will be happy I did that. So. There you go. So you know the stuff in Turkey that makes you sleepy on Thanksgiving. Tryptophan. I feel so, that way right now. I, I don't blame you. You know, we got a little time, but it's, you know, it's, it's starting to kick in a little bit. Our next award recognizes someone who appears to be falling asleep on the job. This is a...
at this point, I could just spin a wheel and name any number of incidents that have had, had horse players wondering when enough is going to be enough for the New York Racing Association stewards to come down hard on some of these riders for their dangerous tactics. Even ex-jock Richard Migliori started wondering out loud when someone was going to do something uh, with, you know, with some real heft to it after uh, jockey Jalon Samuel just got seven days for careless riding after a move that put Trevor McCarthy in the hospital. He has a broken pelvis, broken collarbone. He's going to be out for, I think, like 10 weeks. You know, we're kind of waiting for something serious to go on here, but it seems like someone might be asleep at the switch. Yeah, to, to clarify, the, the there's three stewards, like there, like there are at almost every racetrack. Uh, one is appointed by the New York State Gaming Commission, and apparently that steward has more authority than the other two. At least that's what I've been led to believe. They don't really talk about it much. The other one is appointed by the New York Racing Association. And the third one is appointed by the Jockey Club. So it's they're working the Naira tracks. They don't all work for Naira, but it just it's just amazes me how they continue to let the herding and the dangerous riding, particularly horses coming out at the top of the stretch, swinging out, you know, like that's what happened here. And you know, like you said, somebody is going to get hurt. By the way, this category, the tryptophan there's so many potential nominations for this one that um you know we we could go on about some of the others but the naira stewards as i put on twitter a couple of months ago they're like bad referees that have lost control of the game and and you know they're they don't they, they don't call fouls they you know they, they've they've completely lost control and they've got to get control back from the jockeys it's not a good situation for anybody some refs are known for swallowing that whistle and letting them play, but sometimes you got to blow the whistle. Yeah. So right. with any Thanksgiving dinner, someone's going to act up, you know, do something that you don't like, and you have to send them to the kids' table. Now it's time to send someone to the kids' table. Chad, Chad, Chad. Yeah. This past month has not been the best for him on social media, has it been, Ray? No, it hasn't. Uh, and, and honestly, this year has not been uh, a very good year for Chad Brown. Forgetting the wins and the losses, uh, it's really the off-the-track uh, activities that have that have really kind of put a you know a, ba a bad stamp on on the year for him. Yeah, that's you hit it on the head. Um, there's really not much else to be said about that besides if you want to get in depth on that you can see as, as as to why chad brown is being sent to the kids table you can read it on publications far more reputable than perez hilton yeah you know i i mean i <laughs> chad and i had a very cordial relationship for a long time on twitter and uh all of a sudden from out of nowhere he just blocked me and then oh and then <laughs> And then uh, he he got into a, a a tit for tat with with some horse player, where he just starts hurling personal insults. It looked like a complete meltdown uh, by Chad, and it looked like somebody that that did a wellness check or something said, "Hey, you got to knock this off." So he deleted his Twitter account, went back to training horses. And I kind of hope that that's where he focuses his attention uh, for the rest of the year and then going forward in 2023. The ultimate stick to racing. Exactly. So, so Thanksgiving is typically not a great holiday for birds. We lose a lot of good turkeys every year around this season. But every once in a while, the birds take a swipe back. This is the Revenge of the Birds Award.
Oof. Yeah. Yeah. So back in March, a goose and a flamingo found themselves in the first turn at Gulfstream Park at the worst possible time. And I'm just going to read the Aquabase chart notes for this one. Proton Pack leapt while grazing a goose heading into the first turn, then trampled an ill-fated pink flamingo and retired after half a mile. That's a pretty rough day at the office. Yeah, I mean, a, a flamingo and a, and, a, and a goose walk onto a turf course. It sounds like, the, the you know, the... <laughs> first line of a bad joke um yeah when you think about all the birds that gave their lives so that we could have a nice thanksgiving dinner uh it makes this pale in comparison but it was not a pretty scene uh, it, nobody likes to see an animal get hurt and uh it was unfortunate but there's a lot of birds at, at Gulfstream park there's a lot of birds at a at many race tracks and yeah. and you know we've seen photographs of horses crossing the wire with a bird just in front of them. I think Ryan, I think it was Ryan Thompson from Gulfstream Park that had one of those photos recently. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we're lucky it doesn't happen more often or that, you know, that birds don't run into the jockeys or horses when they're on, you know, when they're, when they're racing, because a lot, for some reason, racetracks seem to attract a lot of birds. Birds, deer. I remember, I think it was at Presque Isle down. Someone got a picture of a deer just sort of hanging out around the outside rail, you know, a lot of racetracks are in, if not necessarily rural areas, you know, they're in an area where you're going to see some degree of wildlife around. And, you know, I, yeah, like you said, we've been very fortunate to not have incidents more often than we do. And when they do happen, they really draw headlines. Yeah, they do. You know, the, the, uh, you didn't mention alligators. Don't yes, that's true. Famous alligator. And, and I'm a little surprised that there aren't any at Gulfstream Park park you know in the so am i now that you mentioned yeah. i think that's kind of the other side of the that's not more on the bay side isn't it yeah well i'm just kind of happy that they don't have them they got enough yeah. dogs birds so <laughs> all right well so as you're eating your thanksgiving turkey think about the poor birds at Gulfstream park that uh unfortunately won the the uh the first posthumous winners i think of the turkey awards i believe so r.i.p so sometimes at Thanksgiving, speaking of sitting around that table, you got to sit at the spot at the table where your name tag is on it. But a few connections out there had to move things around to make sure they could even get into the party. This is a Switch Seats Award. So as we know, Bob Baffert was ineligible to run any of his horses in this year's Kentucky Derby, and he was even barred from earning qualifying points on the Derby Trail. To get around this, a few of Bob's true rider dies moved their horses to trainer y Tim Yakteen's barn to run in their final preps, earn points, and run them in the Derby. Yakteen, who literally fought a guy to defend Bob's honor. They both ran in the Derby under Baffert's signature blue shadow rolls, and when they each made their next respective starts, they were back under the Baffert shed row. Y'all know we can see you, right? <laughs> now, nothing they did was against the letter of the law, but I thought this was a pretty bad faith move on the part of the owners, whose group is so large I'd run out of breath naming them all. And unless something changes between then and now, I bet they do the same thing again in 2023, so we might get a repeat winner. I, well, I think we are going to see the same thing. It's, it's, uh, it's become... A lot of the best horses that uh, turn out of the Baffert barn don't really get started till later, and they, you know, they if they if they don't win or finish second in a hundred point Derby race, then they're probably not good enough to go to the Derby. So they're just going to probably wait again this year until the last uh, the the last round of the Derby preps. And I I I suppose they'll look at Tim Yakteen again, a fine horseman, you know, worked for Charlie Whittingham in his younger days, and. And, and, uh, you know, nothing against Tim. Uh, you know, I, I know when we see a, we see a horse break its maiden by 10 lengths for Bob Baffert, we're thinking that could be Tim Yakteen's derby horse. <laughs> and that's the thing is that it's not really an enviable position to be in because 
you know, if you succeed, people are just going to heap all the praise on to Baffert because, you know, everyone kind of knows what the jig is. And if you don't succeed, then you're going to get all the blame on it because, oh, they went to your barn and all of a sudden they lost. So I don't know. It's it's a tough gamble, no matter what way you slice that. If he's, it's, you know, brave enough to take it, go on. It's a no win situation for Tim. Yeah. Uh, but at least he's got the turkey award as a, as a fallback. You know, you, you got to have something, and this is a good season too. you yeah. know, yeah. Have, just have something to celebrate. Speaking of celebrating for our final award, let's talk about jumping the gun. The Christmas season seems to get earlier and earlier each year, and we've all been in the Home Depot before when they've been setting up holiday decorations before you've even finished your Halloween candy. In honor of those celebrating things too soon, this is a Christmas Lights in November award. As Noel's angel led every step until maybe the final jump. Tight, tight photo, hold them all. Oh no. Yeah, that's, you know, there wasn't a caption in that, but I'm sure there was a four letter word being exclamated somewhere there. So back in August, jockey Chad Lindsay looked pretty clear aboard Noel's angel in a race at Canterbury Park. As the wire approached, he gave the horse a nice pat, geared down, and coasted to the wire. Then he got caught at the wire by Voodoo Fire and jockey Harry Hernandez. Now, I feel bad because I love it when the jockeys show appreciation to their mounts for a job well done. That stuff just makes me light up inside. Just might want to wait for the wire next time. Yeah, that was painful, but... <laughs> <laughs> the look on his face as he as he saw that horse to the outside passing him just before the wire is is really I mean that's a that's a that's a, a Kodak moment I think they used to call those things. It um, really is just it really it stirs up some emotion within me. I'm still trying to figure out what emotion that is, but I'm feeling something. Yeah, I didn't bet on the horse, so it wasn't anger. Um, so it was <laughs> it might have been though if I had bet on the horse. Understandable. Yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting Christmas lights up early. My my father used to leave them up year round. Uh, we just didn't plug them in until until See, November. I think I think that's the difference there. And you know, it it is what if they're if they're up there. I guess it, they don't really even qualify as Christmas lights anymore. They're just house lights. So you know, you work around it. So Joe, other than these other than these uh, Turkey Award winners this year, I, we always like to be serious for a second. What are you grateful or thankful for this this Thanksgiving? So the last year or so has been pretty eye-opening as to who really has my back in this industry and who doesn't. There's been some true surprises out there. I'm not going to lie, some disappointments. But you know what? There's also been some bright spots. Earlier this year, we launched the Pollock Report Insider Patreon feed, and the response has been nothing short of heartwarming. Mm -hmm. The money it brings in is important, of course, but the names of the people contributing, some of them I know, some of them I don't, each one saying they support what we do, how we do it. That vote of confidence is what gets me out of bed to do my job some days. So I'm thankful for the people that support me, support us. It's meant a lot and it continues to do so. Thank you so much. Well, I'm thankful for the people that get out of bed every morning way before I do. And on Thanksgiving, on Christmas, on New Year's, on every day, they get up early, they work hard, they take care of the horses that we enjoy so much watching gambling on whatever so for me i am just thankful for the people who take care of the horses i might piggyback on that one too that's that, i might take yours that's a good one <laughs> all right well that's going to do it we wish everybody out there a happy thanksgiving beginning of the holiday season and uh you can go ahead and hang all those lights up uh starting next week i guess right proceed all right well that's going to do it for this special edition of the friday show we'll see you next week Support award-winning independent horse industry journalism and become a Pollock Report Insider on Patreon. For as little as $5 a month, insiders get access to exclusive Q&As with Pollock Report staff, insight behind our editorial process, exclusive opinions and on-site analysis, Pollock Report merch, 
and more. This is not a paywall. The website you know and love will always be the same. But if you want more, and you want to make our coverage even better, visit patreon.com slash and become a Pollock Report Insider today.